I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when, and how and where and who. Thanks for joining me. I'm Jeremy Nicholson from Screen Matrix, and today I'd like to talk about the fundamentals of marketing as I see them. Now, before you run away, uh, it may seem obvious, but please bear with me. It's important because so much of what's written about marketing, especially on social media, dives straight down to the complexities of brand perception or digital analysis. And yet without a clear brief or business plan, this is worse than useless. Most people know the first verse of Kipling's poem, but there's a second message. But different folk have different views. I know a person small. She keeps 10 million serving men who get no rest at all. So you ask too many questions, you get too many answers. You're overwhelmed. And if you're running a multi-channel e-commerce business with multiple campaigns and A-B testing, it's very easy to get lost in the analytics, metrics, KPIs, and the result is you get no rest at all. Furthermore, ask the wrong questions and you get the wrong answers. You can have the best rifle in the world, but if the sights are out, you're wasting a lot of ammunition. So to start the process, these are the questions I would suggest you ask in order to create the business plan or marketing brief to form the foundation of your business growth. So number one, what is marketing to me and what need am I addressing? What measurements are important? Two, why should my audiences listen and respond? Three, who are my target audiences? Regulators, investors, competitors, market and other stakeholders. Four, where will I find, fix and address them? Five, when will they be responsive? Six, how do I address my audience and monitor the results to enhance performance? So, first of all, <clears throat> what is marketing and more specifically, what need am I addressing? which measurements are important to me. Well, there are several definitions of marketing and they seem to concentrate on the communication between an organization and its audience. I choose a simpler definition. Marketing makes it easier to buy. So my defin definition includes communication with stakeholders and regulators, as well as customers, suspects and prospects. But by my definition, anything which makes it easier to buy is marketing. So product development, finance options, investor relations, affiliates, channels, corporate reputation. They are just as much marketing as price features and benefits and messaging and media. I believe <clears throat> marketing also includes logistics and anything that lowers transaction costs through systems integration and automation because they affect lead times and margins and therefore pricing. So as it's a wider definition, there are numerous metrics that can be applied. Now these divide into internal, such as sales, revenue, margins, volume, average order value, costs, lead times, and of course your standard marketing KPIs, such as OTS, CPM, CTR, cost of acquisition, customer lifetime value, and campaign return on investment. If you don't know what any of those things are, there's loads of places you can find out. Then there are external KPIs, such as market size, economic and cultural trends, competitor evaluation, segment analysis, and, and so on. And remember that measurements which are important for quarterly sales figures are not always relevant for long-term brand equity and business development. In fact, short-term gains from, for example, price cutting actively damage long-term brand equity. So nearly knowing what these metrics are and knowing how to use them doesn't do you any good. You have to know their relative value and you have to know how to employ them. That's why I think that marketing is just as much an art as it is a science. So <clears throat> why have I chosen my audience and why should it respond? So that, that can be as simple as there are 10,000 houses within a 10 mile radius with central heating and that requires maintenance. Or it can be a bit more complicated like of all the FTSE 500 companies, 86% of CTOs have indicated that incorporating AI into product development is a key driver. Of the two, I'd be more inclined to trust the former, but you get the idea. That's who are you going to talk to? 
turning this around, which is what marketers call going through the looking glass, why would your customers choose you? There may be 10,000 houses that need heating engineers. Why should they choose your services rather than the 50 or so other suppliers in your area? You can call this unique selling point or unique perceived benefit or whatever, but the question's the same. And in the vast majority of cases, what it comes down to is customer service or the personality of the brand. If that's you, then you are the personality of your brand. Who are my target audience, market and other stakeholders? Well, obviously, there's, there's suspects, prospects and customers. But what about your regulators, influencers, investors and suppliers? Nowadays, social media reviewers and influencers and bloggers and comparison sites, while they're not your customers, they're immensely important. So those are the people with whom you need to communicate. Where will I find, fix and address them? Well, that might mean where in a geographical sense, but it can also mean where in a media or channel sense or in digital terms, it can mean what, what ecosystem do these people operate in? It, it usually means a combination of all three. Think about if you're a chef, you run a restaurant, so you might think that local business is all that matters. And then you might look at Tom Kerridge and other celebrity chefs who place so much emphasis on Instagram. The reach is global, surely it's a lot of wastage. And you may think, well, they're only doing it because it's free. Well, partly, but because restaurants of that type are destinations and customers will travel to them from hundreds or even thousands of miles away, there's a value in Instagram exposure there. However, for those particular individuals, it also sells their books and delivers viewers to their TV series. And that makes them more valuable as an influencer for endorsing other people's products. So they've obviously looked at it and it's worth spending the money. It's not really free. They spend money on um, uh, video production and, and those sort of things. So um, it's worth doing for them. When will they be most responsive? Well, there are studies about how many prospects are capable of buying but are not ready to buy at any particular time. Um, recent research by the B2B Institute and the Ehrenberg Bass Institute demonstrated that only an average 5% of B2B buyers in a, in a category are in the market and ready to buy at any given time. Well, that sort of information, whilst undoubtedly valuable for large-scale marketers, is of less immediate apparent value to the average SME. Because if you adopt a basic longitudinal marketing strategy, that will address your issues. It doesn't matter whether they're ready to buy in a month or whatever. You can bring, you know, you can bring them into the net through um, identifying objective triggers. Um, you, for this, you can either use data that you hold within your organisation, such as date of birth or postcode, or you can use external data. So um, in the B2B world, for example, forthcoming legislative change is also is always a, a business driver. Next, how? How do I address my audience and measure the results so I can enhance performance? How you address your audience is a, a combination of message and medium. The objective is to deliver the right message to the right audience at the right time. Now there are acres of content on this subject and thousands of people and businesses have been set up to offer consultancy and services and, and mine is just one of them. So I'll summarise one of the greats of Madison Avenue Advertising, Bill Birnbach. Um, there are only really three creative ways to communicate a message. Exposure, example, and endorsement. That's a very high level overview. Um, and always remember that uh, Birnbach operated um, in a time of mass broadcast communication and didn't include the internet, but the principles remain the same. You can read more about him online. He was a very clever guy. Exposure is obvious. A classified ad or a 48 sheet poster showing a logo is, it, it delivers measurable exposure. It sounds simple, but there, there are some brilliant examples of exposure advertising being really effective. Um, 
going back a bit, uh, John Hegarty's work for The Economist is a good example with his 48 sheet post, 40, yeah, 48 sheet posters. Or you just look at the Google homepage. I mean, that's exposure and um, it works. Example shows the product in use and gives its features and benefits through user stories, case studies or so on. Um, and this is what most advertising does. And it can be used widely in, in terms of the, the creative concepts. Um, you, you know, it could include lifestyle advertising. I think for my generation, one of the most famous is McCann Erickson's Gold Blend couple ads uh, with Anthony Head in uh, I think 1987 to 1993. Um, you might not, looking at them first time, realise they were flogging instant coffee, but um, you know it, it worked. And my own favourite is endorsement, uh, and and it's my favourite because it achieves several of Burnback's principles, such as personality, relevance, and honesty. Um, a great example of the use of endorsement was in Ogilvy's 1985 LucasAid campaign, which featured UK Olympian Daley Thompson. And that effectively repositioned the brand from an illness recovery drink to um, uh, the first entrant in a brand new market sector of energy drinks. Finally, which media should you employ? And in a modern scenario, what related analytics and metrics should you choose to go with it? Again, too large a topic to address here and now, but there are literally millions of articles to help you and I'm going to be drilling down in this subject in later um, uh, posts. However, in most cases, the simplest method is to select what you yourself consume. A uh, marketer must always operate within their own market. They, they, you have to be a part of it and immerse yourself in it. So if you are in a B2B business and you use a certain trade website or attend certain events, the chances are that's where you'll find your customers and the sources of the measurements which allow you to enhance the quality and quantity of business opportunities you receive. So that's a very quick high level overview of my take on the fundamental principles of marketing. Thanks for joining me. I will be posting more episodes which drill down, but for the meantime, Thank you and um, hope to see you soon.